Good evening and welcome to this edition of Talk Pixa. Recent rains, the offshoot of several cyclones in the region that have passed close to Papua New Guinea, have caused havoc in several provinces in the country. Tonight in the studio with me, we have the Governor for West New Britain, Honorable Sassindran Mutavel. Governor Mutavel will be speaking to us about he, his efforts and how he has dealt with several of the disasters that have happened from these rains. Governor Mutavel, welcome to Talk Pixar and thank, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Uh, so it's been a difficult couple of weeks for you. Uh, we have had several um, damages according into infra infrastructure and to um, the lifestyle of the people in West New Britain. Most of these are from flooding, um, from these heavy rains. How have you dealt with that? Thank you, Neville. I mean, uh, to be honest, like uh, we have not expected this unusual, you know, heavy rain. Uh, every year, like in February, March, it's always a wet season. We have had uh, some previous ex experiences of, uh, you know, heavy flood and all. But uh, this year, it was, it, it was extreme and it's very unusual rain, like torrents of rain with wind and, you know, uh, the heavy flood. And also it causes, uh, it caused a lot of landslides, like towards the mountains where the rivers are flowing. And that made it really worse. And um, uh, we lost like two, you know, major bridges which are connecting the New Britain Highway. <coughs> uh, New Britain Highway, as you know, it's, it's like an um, uh, economic lifeline for West New Britain and also for the country. Because uh, that's a road which, uh, you know, helps to transport all these agriculture produce like, you know, oil palm fruits to the factories and also the logging trucks, which uses heavily this road. <coughs> now, uh, the, uh, the two towns in the province, one is in Kimbe and another one is uh, Biala. Now, Biala is totally disconnected due to the washing away of uh, these two main bridges. These bridges I'm talking about are like 30, 36 meters long bridges uh, being washed away by rain. And uh, that causes like a lot of, uh, you know, uh, uh, damages to economic uh, infrastructures. We did have past experiences of uh, Co Bridge, which is Buluma Bridge, which connects between Hoskins to Kimbe. Uh, uh, fortunately, we managed to save that bridge. And we did uh, sort of, uh, with the help of two major companies in the province, like uh, New Britain Oil Palm and also Hagi, managed to mobilize some machines and all those, uh, you know, equipments uh, along another private contractor called Nivani. But still, I thought we could save those two bridges, like uh, this uh, Thiauru and Yivule. But we couldn't manage because of like, you know, it's a heavy flood, like simultaneously, you know, coming with rain and wind and all those things. So uh, that two bridges been washed away. And now we have started like, you know, doing the restoration work. Thankfully, for the last three days, I've been in the province. Uh, even today, the, the weather is uh, really, you know, uh, fine. And the, there are some sunlights and some dry weather. So we could sort of mobilize and the water is slowly started to, you know, uh, drying up. Uh, but. Uh, I must admit that uh, we were not ready, you know, to really face this situation, or uh, this heavy, uh, you know, uh, weather pattern. And uh, I was there physically when the, there was heavy rain and as uh, quoted in newspaper and all those things. Yes, it was very terrifying because the rain was quite continuous and it, uh, like, for it, it started like you know on Friday two weeks ago and then it's continuing like until Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and it's like continuous rain throughout the day, throughout the night. And when this rain comes, it comes with like big thunderstorms and, you know, big uh, wind. And uh, I could not imagine what damage like it would have caused, you know, those people who do not have like permanent roofs and uh, living in the villages, just keeping some roofing irons and keeping some stones. A uh, lot of houses like the roofs have, uh, you know, blown away. <coughs> and the, and the, the oil palm gardens and the food gardens all submerged in water. So this is uh, bringing enormous difficulty, like, you know, the, to the livelihood of uh, people. And uh, definitely we were not really uh, fast enough to react. And as in fact, it's now the relieving efforts of, you know, distributing some basic uh, food and tents and all those things just started and, you know, going into the <clears throat> most affected areas first. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, it's, it's a very unfortunate uh, situation where we lost uh, two major bridges and also it caused a lot of landslides and the, the infrastructure damage is so heavy and uh, we were also focusing mainly on infrastructure damage <coughs> while the damage to the actual livelihoods of people and you know the human humanitarian point of uh, uh, 
you know, consideration of uh, damage is also extreme. That's when <coughs> I came down to meet with uh, Prime Minister directly and put an appeal. Mm -hmm. And uh, he did, in spite of his uh, hard schedule and all, he did in front of me call various secretaries and people to, you know, really um, release these funds. Like, uh, I, I believe 10 million kina has been allocated. This is for disaster effect. Like, mm -hmm. this is through National Disaster Agency. And even he was saying, due to time constraint, they, he was even instructing them to release the funds to provincial disaster, you know, offices. There are more than six provinces, I believe, you know, have uh, been damaged by this flood situation and also this uh, cyclone disaster. Uh, not just West New Britain, it's also East New Britain, Jivaka, Medang, <coughs> and even Central Province, and uh, Morabe Province, and all these provinces also been affected. So, thought like, you know, we are going to get our share of, you know, the initial um, uh, indication from national disaster was that uh, they are going to give at least one million kina on a humanitarian side to buy uh, some basic food items and buy some tents and mosquito nets and uh, some basic tools to sort of give it to people to rebuild uh, their lives. You know, of course, I, I tend to think that, you know, the authorities, uh, especially the bureaucrats, you know, who are in a responsible position, they should consider because this uh, kind of situation we are faced with and it needs immediate attention. And uh, the Prime Minister did his part by, you know, giving the instruction and all these things and we've been desperately following up. We were so fortunate, especially from uh, private people, uh, you know, have come forward. A lot of people have, you know, offered help in terms of cash, some in terms of uh, giving some uh, relief, uh, relief goods, food items and all. Uh, starting with uh, Indian Association have given mm -hmm. 25,000 kina, Kovac PNG has given 50,000 kina, and uh, Badili Hardware has given 10,000, RH Foundation has given uh, 30,000 kina. And uh, Kila Kila Secondary School students, that was very emotional for me because uh, uh, our children are not really studying in that school in West New Britain just for or our appeal. The students and with the help of the principal and deputy principal. The only uh, connection I have in that school is the deputy principal is my own talk. And uh, apart from that, within two days, this was on Sunday we informed and Tuesday they presented like more than 14 bales of uh, clothes and also 15 cartons of various gift items and 2,000 kina, you know, uh, check where the children collected and the teachers contributed. So that was really emotional and moving for us. That gave us a lot of confidence that, you know, our people are still, you know, care for each other and uh, we still be able to manage this situation. I'm sure we can handle the humanitarian side of it, uh, you know, with the assistance uh, from national government and also the provincial government and the private uh, people helping. The infrastructure damage which you know happened in the province, uh, definitely we as a provincial government we do not have the capacity to handle. Mm -hmm. Even for us, any infrastructure related to roads or bridges, most of the time, uh, always we tend to give our counterpart funding to Department of Works, which is um, it's it's, it's, a, it's called provincial works, but it is it reports directly to the National Department of Works, which comes directly under the Works Department in uh, Waigani, and. We need that situation addressed, you know, immediately. And I'm fortunate that minister and secretary have come, mm -hmm. be able to witness first-hand information that they have seen it just before five minutes before they landed on uh, this Evole Bridge. The whole Land Cruiser was, which was appearing in uh, yesterday's newspaper. I saw it like in national, uh, they put like the whole Land Cruiser was washed away. That was true. It was uh, the guy who lost the car was actually standing and talking to the minister also. Uh, we were fortunate to a sense, Minister, at least be able to see the actual damages. It is not that we are just, uh, you know, uh, calling for help from the province uh, without tangible, you know, evidence. Mm -hmm. And uh, that he has seen it and he has heard from people, like especially growers. And fortunately, uh, when we were, went to other part of that uh, Thiavuru bridge where Hagi Oil Pump General Manager also was standing and he was able to give him the scenario of uh, what is going to happen because of mm -hmm. these two bridges. As we speak, it is still not connected. And I believe it will take at least a month even to do a, a temporary log bridge. And 
this is not new. In the last mm -hmm. eight years, <coughs> these two bridges have been washed away four times. <coughs> these are Bailey bridges. They are not cheap. They are expensive also. Like uh, uh, 36 meter would cost roughly around uh, 3 million kina. But they are not considered permanent bridges. It's not uh, you know, built on the permanent ab abutments and, uh, mm -hmm. uh, and, and it's like in, in the last eight years, four times these bridges you know, have been washed away. So that warrants us to think you know, what we can do something permanently. Mm -hmm. And if necessary, you know, uh, the Department of Works can seek the support of JICA, can seek the support of because they've been known as you know, doing some challenging bridges. And these are like you know, uh, doing some studies upstream and find out the, the cause of the water mm -hmm. and do some river training and you know, start building some permanent bridge would be a uh, permanent solution. For example, we would have spent almost over you know, 20 or 25 million in the last mm -hmm. uh, you know, four times when we were handling this um, uh, restoration. We could have used that money to just build one permanent bridge. Would have cost maybe 25 million or 30 million kina. Mm. Now, there's a reason why you keep highlighting the importance of these two bridges, yeah. uh, because it is what connects uh, Kimbe to Biala, yeah. and it's an important lifeline, and it's the only road infrastructure that connects the two towns, right? Yeah. Um, what's the economic impact now that these two bridges are done? I mean, to, let's say the economic impact of Hagi oil palm or on the side of Biala, you know, forget about the side of uh, Kimbe. <laughs> On the side of, uh, you know, Biala alone, <coughs> those, especially those villages like, you know, Sulu, Kayamu, and uh, uh, three other villages who were on this side of the bridge, like especially after Ivule, Tiawuru, and then you got Ivule, and these villages are here. Mm -hmm. And these people are traditionally supplying fruits too, because there is a demarcation between uh, New Britain, Palm Island, and Hagi, you know, okay, I collect fruits up to this area, and they collect fruits mm -hmm. up to this area. So where now Hagi will not be able to send their truck to collect these fruits. And these five villages would lose at least 900,000 kina per month. 900,000 kina per month. And I, we expect next three months they will not be able to you know, easily um, transport their fruits. Uh, we've been negotiating with New Britain Farm Isle to say with an understanding with Hagi, uh, with their consent, that you know, at least uh, let New Britain Farm Oil collect fruit so that the people can uh, sort of you know continue to get that income. But the immediate effect is uh, for you know fruits have been harvested and it was you know waiting for the fruit trucks to be picked up. Unfortunately, when this situation happens, no truck can you know come, and uh, also there was no access to those, as especially the village oil palm roads, which was totally been washed away, and also a lot of uh, gardens also been submerged, especially in this area. Uh, this Kai, Sulumu, uh, Sulu, Kayamu, and all these areas, they're only drinking water source also been, you know, washed and also, you know, uh, contaminated by flood water. So th th these people will be facing some difficulties, like, you know, until that road is connected back. This, this road is not just important for West New Britain. This road is also a road which connects, uh, you know, West and East, West New Britain and East New Britain. And within that West New Britain component, this road generates 1 billion kina revenue, export revenue per annum. And not yeah. just now, since ever, you know, the oil palm industry is uh, established in uh, West New Britain, that is in since 60s. So this is the most uh, important road where the government should be really, you know, showing keen interest to you know, restore back. It's not just our selfish motive for wanting for West New Britain, but this is the road which contributes our export revenue, which we are in desperate need for you know, export revenue. And, and, and now more so because of a disaster, yeah. uh, the response that you're getting from the government is a concern for you. It is certainly a concern because uh, in spite of uh, Prime Minister's direct intervention and uh, instruction that especially there are two sides of this one. One is for the infrastructure and the other one is for the humanitarian aid. And the humanitarian aid where on the humanitarian side of uh, the funds, the one million kina we're supposed to get our share from the allocated 10 million kina for the country, for the whole country. 
<coughs> I, I could see, I mean, I'm happy that uh, uh, we are, you know, giving funds to Vanavatu, we are giving funds to affected our small brothers and all. Definitely they deserve, definitely they need. At the same time, we also need. We, we need, you know, the same help. Just that, you know, our medias have not really captured and, you know, shown. If, mm -hmm. if uh, you send MTV, like, you know, to stay there one week and you go and personally interview people, you will get all those sad stories. A ch child died because of falling off, you know, uh, the tree and another child was severely injured and how many people been injured because of you know all these damages I, I'm not underestimating uh, you know the the disaster and the other part it's definitely I've seen it in the TV I've even seen it in BBC but we are not getting the attention of you know ABC or BBC or whatever you know the international mm -hmm. medias whereas okay I'm thankful that uh, uh, MTV and Kundu TV are you know trying to cover and exposing it because the thing is the capacity of uh, provincial government is very very limited we need uh, definitely the national government's intervention so that at least we could address you know this situation you know effectively and and people have already suffered and after all they are expecting you know some kind of uh, basic help basic help to you know rebuild uh, their lives of course my people will definitely bounce back you know they they, they have proved it and they have been you know uh, hard working and so we will bounce back but it's just that the time is uh, so bad because a lot of our oil palm trees been uprooted. The food gardens been washed away. Some food gardens been, you know, totally wiped because of, uh, you know, landslide. And also, over a period of time, you know, that six hectares I was telling, I'm repeating this, uh, where, you know, four hectares they they supposed to, you know, plant and another mm -hmm. two hectares for food garden. Mm -hmm. Over a period of time, you know, people want to make more money and, you know, the additional uh, members of family and all these things. And that other two hectares also been planted oil palm, mm. and people have no place to you know sort of uh, do the food gardens. They climb on mountains and they started you know growing, and that also causing like you know sort of like you are removing you know the bush and mm. the big trees, so that will cause like soil erosion and all those things. Now with the landslide, people you know lost all those uh, food gardens, so they need to survive you know for another uh, two months or three months and uh, until sort of they can you know grow other food crops and you know survive on so all this put together like you know it's really putting us in a very difficult situation whereas we were fortunate enough almost we collected in terms of uh, cash almost 140,000 kina almost 140,000 kina as of uh, today and uh, uh, we have commitments from uh, uh, Brian Bell they are supplying you know 20 uh, huge tents worth of 44,000 kina Hardware House is generously uh, donating 50,000 kina worth of hardware materials that includes tents, water cans, and uh, some basic nails and you know some tools and all this kind of uh, stuff. And we are using this one plus whatever the provincial government initial allocation of 100,000 kina to address this issue, and uh, they, they are using it. Uh, I'm also feeling kind of uh, guilty, like you know, last year we could have uh, you know arranged one million kina and deposited into uh, this uh, this trust account, but we were waiting for the mechanism as to how they're going to operate this account and you know how will, you know well this account will be scrutinized because this is not uh, under our provincial treasury, but this is another trust fund. Mm. We could have uh, put at least one million kina where if we had that one million kina, we could have you know easily started you know doing. And for the first time, I've been going and sort of you know uh, I wouldn't say begging but appealing uh, to people, and, and I'm, I'm overwhelmed with the kind of you know response, uh, even whatever those the, those uh, I mean whatever so far we have uh, collected, it's still a generous support from people. And uh, the surprising fact is that most of this help came from those people who we do not do any business with. A lot of these people, we never give any business to them, like as a provincial you know, government. And of course, the local companies have contributed. They should be the first one to contribute because after all, you know, they are benefiting from our people, you know, uh, from the oil palm income. They spend it in uh, Kimbe. And we have not received, you know, the promised support of that one because the, the point is, let's say we handle these situations. There are few deaths and few sufferings, and after a month, okay, you get this one million kina. So what is the point of getting the money after you know people have suffered enough mm -hmm. and you know survived, and it is not going to make any impact or anything. It, it is, it, if, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, it will be even uh, misused. This is the right time where you know it's it's. Uh, uh, peak time where people are really suffering and people are desperate for help.
help. This is the time we must support them with some food crops. We must support them with some basic tools where you know they can, uh, because uh, the lands, a uh, lot of landslide and a lot of you know uh, the food gardens washed away. So at least they can start rebuilding their gardens and all these things. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I think you know the time is more critical. That it is important that we act now. We don't act you know after a month. If I receive one million kina and I take some photo, it's not going to make me happy. It's the uh, people are desperate now, and it is best that we do the help now. Okay. Um, how long before you start to distribute um, all that you've collected in terms of relief? Um, I understand that, as you mentioned, you did not expect um, or you did not even think of making, making a public appeal for assistance. And that appeal has now come good. And, and you said you, you're overwhelmed with the response. Um, if the money doesn't come from the government, the commitment, um, how much can be done? Okay, yeah, um, so far we have collected, uh, as of today, they are collecting 2,000 bales of rice. We have spoken okay. to Chukai. Chukai has given a special price, uh, so 104,000 or something for the 2,000 bales of rice. And we have collected lots of, uh, you know, the local companies have also delivered some rice and biscuits and noodles and all those food items. Some second hand clothes, some local uh, second hand clothing companies have also given a few bales of uh, second hand clothing. And uh, Rotary, uh, uh, Rotary Australia, Rotary here, Rotary in PNG, have given uh, 40 aqua boxes. I was not sure what is, um, you know, the aqua boxes. But yesterday when I received and uh, we opened one aqua boxes, I was very impressed because within that such a small box, they had almost everything to rebuild your life. They had you had like you know two treated mosquitoes and you had uh, one big bed sheet and one big tarpaulins to make a you know, tent and you have torchlight, you have you know, soaps and you have like buckets, you have uh, tools like uh, spade and hammers and, and uh, water you know, treatment uh, uh, equipment. So where you, know, you can put the dirty water and uh, the, the medicine can treat it with and you know, it purifies the water. So that 40 of those boxes received yesterday, I must say a big thank you to Air New Guinea for airlifting this one free of cost. And uh, not only that 40 boxes they lifted, they promised us that whatever the relief, you know, uh, goods, especially tents and water cans, uh, the Air New Guinea will continue to, continue to help us to airlift those things to the province. And uh, <coughs> uh, we have accumulated all these things. And now the disaster office is uh, coordinating with all those affected allergies, especially like uh, Hoskins, Thalassia, Mosa, and, uh, you know, Central Nakanai, East Nakanai, Kovekale. So they are <coughs> getting all the LLG uh, presidents and LLG managers and their staffs, and then they are cross-checking, you know, the reports so far we have collected in the affected areas. So, and they are planning to distribute all at one go. Like especially this, we we told all the public servants that includes all the public servants in the provincial government and police and Department of Works to use every available resources, whether it's their open back cars or trucks to load all these things and to go with <coughs> the disaster office staff and to go and you know, start distributing and you know, if uh, necessary, they kind of create a voucher for people to you know, sign it that they received uh, you know, these items. Because I'm also very keen to know that you know, how well we spend this money because I pledged that uh, you know, this money will not be touched or misused apart from you know, the, the purpose for you know, helping those affected people. So I, I'm personally interested and keen to know how this money, I told the uh, provincial administrator and the director for disaster to ensure they report to me at least once in a week basis and with the bank statement and tell us that, you know, how much money received and how much was, you know, spent. So we've been monitoring and uh, this Friday, Saturday is the time they are now going out for, you know, the distribution of uh, foods and uh, other items. And also we are expecting um, uh, Chinese ambassador visiting our province <coughs> uh, on, the, on Sunday and Monday, 29th and 30th. Uh, I've been also informed that they're also helping, up, uh, helping us with uh, over 100 tents and some basic food items. So, uh, of course, we won't be waiting for all those items to arrive, but whatever the things we have now already accumulated, now they started distributing. Well, well. Governor, um, MTV is moving into a new area of reporting, <coughs> and they're specifically on disaster reporting. Um, and we would like to play um, a, a larger role in informing our people about the disasters and how to be prepared for them, okay. and how to deal with disasters when they happen. Um, and as a token of um, 
our assistance towards the disaster in your province. The staff and management, through the management, have agreed to donate 5,000 kina towards your appeal. Thank you. Yes. This day. So, Thanks a lot. So this will go towards helping you assist the people of West New Britain. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Neville. I'm very touched and moved because uh, this is a kind of donation. I mean, it's for me, it's a first time experience of getting money from you know people. Like uh, uh, when I'm in a business sector, I try to give as much as I can to help governments. But for, I mean, for the first time, I've been going around to business houses and uh, you know appealing. I'm so thankful and grateful. I mean, as I mentioned that. Uh, your effort of giving this 5,000, you know, will not be uh, go unnoticed because we will ensure that this money is, you know, spent in a more transparent manner and also reported back to public. Maybe one of the other opportunity when it comes for us, you know, with MTV, we will be presenting a report as to how much money received and, you know, how it was spent and those things. So that I'm very adamant to provincial administrator and the disaster office that, you know, they should be updating governor's office on, uh, so, you know, this uh, disaster trust fund. And uh, for the uh, since, to be quite honest, the situation is still kind of continuing, though we start mobilizing now, <coughs> restoring those infrastructures, especially connecting back uh, those uh, Ivule and Tiawuru bridge, and also connecting, uh, doing, attending to those landslides, you know, which happened in Buluma village. The damage which was caused to infrastructures alone, in West New Britain alone, would need at least 30 million kina. I would agree to uh, the Minister for Works in his appeal for national government to give the department 80 million kina, because that is the implementing agency for roads and bridges, 80 million kina to address you know, all these six provinces which are affected by this flood. And without that 30 million kina, I don't think like, you know, they can establish any kind of you know, permanent infrastructures apart from we do some log bridges. And log bridges is always a threat. It can you know, wash away any time. <coughs> One example is uh, Bluma Bridge. That's a bridge which connects also a national road between uh, Hoskins and Kimbe. This bridge has been abandoned for the last eight years. The department built one Bailey Bridge. We haven't even cut the ribbon or opened it, uh, same like uh, you know, five years ago there was one heavy rain and that bridge has been, you know, bridge was not washed away but uh, the bridge was totally damaged and all those, uh, you know, surrounding sites, mm -hmm. the, there was a huge landslide and now there is a huge area to um, uh, backfill, like, you know, to uh, bring back that bridge and, and that bridge has been abandoned for almost last eight years and the uh, minister has seen it. We have taken photos and, you know, reports and we have given the costings and uh, I, I call upon, you know, the national government to be uh, sensitive enough to, you know, uh, heed our appeal. And because this is really important, that's an important bridge which connects, you know, uh, Hoskins and Kimbe from airport. Without that bridge, you can't come to Kimbe. And this is also part of uh, the New Britain Highway. And, and it's also one of the main link which carries, you know, the, our roads, you know, have to withstand the uh, fruit trucks and oil tankers and uh, the logging trucks. And these are, we are talking about, you know, all economic activities. There are huge money, they talk about, you know, forest industry, they talk about oil palm industry. And the national government generates all this revenue. So there is every reason, you know, for us to think that national government will look after us by, we are not asking the money to West New Britain provincial government. We are asking the money for Department of Works so that they can build our bridges course, give the money and let us know that this money is earmarked for this purpose of, uh, you know, Buluma Bridge. Chief Secretary is very passionate about this Buluma Bridge. Every time I talk about it, he's one of, he's one strong person who always say, you know, he wanted to help and he talks to, you know, the other secretaries. But unfortunately, we're still not able to achieve that one. And for, to the public and uh, private institutions and development partners, like, uh, you know, various diplomat agencies and all these people, I would like to seek again the appeal uh, that, uh, the province is, uh, the people are still suffering, especially those who have lost their houses, their food gardens, and their oil palm is submerged under water, and they would still need support. And I, I, I appeal to the public that, you know, we have established the trust fund account, which the provincial administrator and the director disaster signs. The account name is called WNBPG, WNBPG, uh, the account name is called WNBPG, Emergency and Disaster Trust Fund Account, WNBPG, Disaster and Emergency Account, 
and the account number is 6035507. 6035507, it is a Westpac account, Westpac uh, check account in uh, Kimbe branch. And I appeal to each and you know, every organizations who, who, who have some connection related to you know, disaster management to also to support our provincial disaster office in terms of addressing uh, the situation. Thank you. Governor, a lot of challenges in your province. You've got um, people that, just, that are still awaiting relief. You've got infrastructure that still needs to be built. You've got government agencies who have yet to come and, and live up to their commitments to you. Um, it is a challenging job. Um, but from what we've seen so far, you're at the forefront and you're leading this fight to get everything um, squared away for, for the people of Western New Britain. Um, MTV will be touching base with you in a couple of weeks um, to see how you've progressed with that. And we wish you well and thank you very much for coming into Talk Pixar. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot for the 5,000 assistance from MTV.